across a story called Dear Diary. In this story, we come across many new words. Shall we learn the word meaning of these words? Let's look at the first one. Spilling. Allowing liquid to run from a container accidentally. It's always good to clean up after spilling something on the floor. Scolding. An angry rebuke. Dismay. Disappointment. We all feel dismayed sometimes, right? Moreover, adding something to what has already been said. When you are talking something and you would like to add something to it, we can use the word moreover. Frowned. Had an angry look. Hopscotch. An outdoor game. Wagged. Move rapidly from one side to the other. Usually, dogs, they wag their tail when they are happy or when they look at somebody who is friendly to them. Now, I'm going to read few sentences that is given in the book and you have to tell me which word is suitable for these sentences. Let's look at the activity that's given in page number 29. A vehicle that carries children to school. What is that? It's school bus, that's right. A box with food that children carry to school. We usually call it a lunch box. A game in which a pattern of numbered squares is drawn on the floor and children play by hopping from square to square. Hopscotch, yes, we just learnt the meaning. An alarm made of brass used in schools to make a ringing sound. School bell. Most of us wait for the school bell to ring to go home. A thing that increases knowledge and is bound and stitched. It's a book. Most animals have it. Some animals wag it when they are happy. I just told you all, it's a tail. A vessel in which one usually drinks milk or water. What is it called? It's a glass. Very good. Now it's time to learn some grammar. Today we're going to learn more about proper nouns and common noun. So what is a proper noun? When we're talking about one particular person, place, animal or thing, then it's called a proper noun. For example, Raju, Charminar and things like that, which is a name of a particular person or a place. And uh, what is common noun? Common noun, when we don't talk about a particular person, place, or animal or thing, then it becomes common noun. When we talk about, you know, for example, a book, a boy, or a house, and things like that are common nouns. Now that you have learned about common nouns and proper noun, let's look at the activity that's given in the book. Whenever you find a common noun, write C next to the word and whenever you find a proper noun write p let's try the first one eagle eagle is a proper noun because it's the name of a particular bird right so write p next to it and the second one is book book is a common noun and the third one is hava mahal so that's a proper noun how about new delhi a proper noun again usa proper noun. Priya is the name of a particular girl, so we write P. It's proper noun. And the next one is brother. That's a common noun. The last one is cheetah. That's a proper noun again. Now, we're going to look at irregular plurals. So it's very important that we understand the plural forms of words. And there are few rules that you need to remember when you are talking about the plural form of different words. Let's look at it. You might know them already and some you can learn them today. Let's try the first one. Lion. The plural form of lion here, you can just add S and it becomes lions. So here, they have given that you can add different things at the end of each word. One is you can add just S and for the others you can add ES, VS or IES. Let's look and see what we need to do here. The second one is notebook. 
for notebook, we can just add the letter S at the end and it becomes notebooks. The third one is mango. Here, mango ends with a consonant plus the vowel O. So we need to add ES at the end of the word and only then you get mangoes. So how do we spell it? M-A-N-G-O-E-S. That's the plural form of mango. And the next one is thief. Here, there's another thing that we need to remember. Any word that ends with F or F-E, we need to add V-E-S. So here, to get the plural form of thief, we need to write it as T-H-I-E-V-E-S. And it becomes thieves. The fifth one here is match. Again, match ends with the word with the letters C and H. So the words that end with C and H, S and H, S or double S and Z, all these words we need to add ES at the end. So if we want to get the plural form of match, we need to write M-A-T-C-H-E-S. It becomes matches. The next one is country. Here we have a Y at the end of the word. So any word that ends with a consonant plus a Y, we need to add I-E-S. So to get the plural form of country, we need to write it as C-O-U-N-T-R-I-E-S and it becomes countries. The next one also is similar. It's berry. Berry, we need to uh, get berries. So we write it as B-E-R-R-I-E-S because the word ends with Y here again. The next one is loaf. Here the word ends with F. Remember any word that ends with F, we need to replace it with V-E-S. So we get the plural form as L-O-A-V-E-S. The ninth one is woman. Sometimes the vowels in the word is replaced with another vowel to get the plural form. Like woman is, the plural form would be women. So we need to write it as W-O-M-E-N. And the last one is mystery. Can you try guessing this? It ends with a consonant plus Y. So then we need to end it with I-E-S and then you get the word mysteries. We spell it with M-Y-S-T-E-R-I-E-S. -E -E now we're going to learn about homophones. Most of us know what are homophones, right? The words which sound similar. We pronounce it just the same but the meaning is entirely different and also the spelling is different. Let's look at some of the sentences that's given in our book. So as I read it, you have to tell me which word is suitable for this sentence. Let's look at the first one. I will write a letter to my dear friend. So which word is suitable here? Is it W-R-I-T-E or R-I-G-H-T? It's W-R-I-T-E. We are talking about writing a letter. The second one, I have an orange, but I want an apple too. They're talking about another fruit, so it's T-O-O. -O. And the third one, Rohan cannot bear the pain in his stomach. They're not talking about any animal, so the spelling here would be B-A-R-E and not B-E-A-R. The fourth one, Ashta knew about her birthday surprise, so here the spelling would be K-N-E-W. William does not know the rules of Kabaddi. So is the spelling N-O? No, it's K-N-O-W. The last one, Joe solved the sum quickly. They're talking about S-U-M and not S-O-M-E. Now, the next we have a story called The List in our book. And here they talk about a boy named Jeeva who is very playful. It's an interesting story and I hope all of you have read it. 
Now let's look at some of the word meaning that we can learn today. The first one here, playful. Playful means in an amusing mood. Jiva was a very playful boy. Craft, an activity that requires manual skill. All of us love to go to craft class, right? Crumbled, creased and wrinkled. Apologize, to ask for forgiveness. It's always good to apologize after doing a mistake. Embarrassed, ashamed. It's all right to feel embarrassed sometimes. Now, we learn the meaning of these words. See, we're going to look at some of the similar words that are given here. And we have to fill in the blanks in each of these sentences using the appropriate words. The first one, the weather remains dash in spring. We have few options here. Which one do you think is suitable? How about we try pleasant? Yeah, during spring, the weather remains pleasant. All students are dash to participate in extracurricular activities. All students are crumbled? No, it's required. That's correct. All students are required to participate. Preeta dash her 10 rupee note. Which word do you think is appropriate? Crumbled. Correct. John behaves in a very dash way. John behaves in a very playful way. Ria dash that she had left her water bottle at home. She realized the students dash for their mistake. The students apologized. That's the right one. Now it's grammar time again. This time we're going to learn about collective nouns. Have you heard the words like troop, deck and pile? These are called collective nouns because they talk about a group of nouns. When they talk about more than two or three nouns, they are called collective nouns. For example, if there are a group of singers, we call them a choir. How about if there are a group of musicians, then we call them a band. Very good. In the same way, there are more collective nouns in this match the following. Let's look at column A and column B. And we can connect and see which one is suitable for each of these words. The first one here is lions. In page number 37, we have column A and column B. And lions, what would we call a group of lions? We call them a pride, like in the movie Lion King, right? And the second one are ships. Ships, how about ships? We call them a fleet of ships. Flowers, a group of flowers, we call them a bouquet. We usually love to give bouquets for occasions. And cards, cards are deck of cards. How about trucks? Trucks, we call them as a convoy of trucks. And the next one is caterpillars. Caterpillars are army of caterpillars. Actors, how about actors? Troop of actors. And the last one, student. That's very easy. A class of students. So this is how we can use collective nouns easily when we want to talk about a group of things, group of nouns. Next time when you see them, remember to use these words. Hope you all remember all that we learned. Have a nice time.